Welcome back. Let's continue now with other news. In fact, let's take you to the DRC now. We're on politics editors standing by with the DRC Vice uh, Prime Minister Jean-Pierre Bemba. Of course, yesterday we witnessed the um, president-elect Felix Shitsikedi um, being sworn in for a second term. And we were just looking at the reception there of um, following some of the red flags and questions that had been raised about the election irregularities. So as we await him, why to um, bring us the latest on that front with that conversation. We're also speaking about the role of South Africa and the DRC and what that also means of the agency of the continent, just giving, given rather the um, geopolitical landscape that is shifting. We were also looking at some of the other dynamics set to come to the fore. But for now, Mzoi is standing by. Let me hand it over to him. With me uh, is the Vice President, Prime Minister of the DRC, uh, Jean-Pierre Bemba, who is no stranger to the politics of the DRC. He's been around. Uh, we know him even during the transitional time where he was the uh, vice president and, in, and of course uh, I've had the opportunity to speak to him about those issues. But what we're going to do today, we're going to find out in terms of the vision of the country as they've been given this uh, new mandate. Uh, welcome uh, Mr. Vice Prime Minister. It's good to have you. I remember that uh, I once had this interview similar back in 2005 uh, in Kinshasa. And then, of course, there, you were very hopeful because you were at the transitional state, so you were looking forward to a better uh, Congo. Yeah. Uh, when you go back from 2005 to, to, to today, is that the kind of Congo you were hoping for? Thank you for being here. <clears throat> First of all, of course, when you compare from uh, 2005, six uh, up to today things has uh, changed the last i would say five years because uh, during 18 years of uh, the former regime uh, things has gone down i just uh, just wanted to give one uh, example uh, i left uh, the country in uh, 2007 we succeeded in 2005 to triple the budget of the state from to, to double i would say to double and half because we came when i came in 2003 the budget was three billion, and when I left, it was something like uh, seven billion. But when I came back in 2018, 2019, we still had the same budget, five billion. Today, the last five years, with President Tshisekedi on the first mandate, <laughs> the budget raised from the five billion to 16 billion. That is the difference during the last five years, and I'm very happy about that one. So clearly, the ex yeah. billion in dollars. In dollars, oh yes, which is quite significant. And then clearly uh, saying something perhaps about your own role as well, uh, because obviously there was that time um, when you obviously went to Europe and then you got arrested for about 10 years, yeah. and then f that time that you are mentioning, so clearly uh, nothing happened from there. Given that um, we do see that there's some improvement um, in the past five years, but there are still a lot of challenges in this country, um, uh, Vice Prime Minister. So what is it that you have decided uh, together with uh, the team, uh, including the president, uh, you will do better to alleviate the problems of the people of this country? Yeah, um, of course there are a lot of to do. And I will take uh, the, the program and the speech of the President Tshisekedi yesterday yeah. during the Soyin ceremony. He gave uh, like uh, six uh, direction that uh, he wanted to implement uh, during his uh, second mandate. Uh, one of the direction uh, among the six direction is to to increase the in employment, yeah. to give more employment for the people in Congo and particularly the young people by diversifying the economy, by giving them access to developing local projects. Yeah. That is one of the really main things. Second, he wanted to stabilize and to improve the purchasing power by stabilizing mm -hmm. the inflation and, stabilize and uh, stabilizing and so the exchange rate yeah. between, of course, uh, the dollar and uh, the Congolese strike. Mm -hmm. um, the, the third I saw, and because we have started already that program is to secure all the Congolese people, all the territory, to assure the territory integrity also in, for the whole people, because without security you cannot develop I mean, a country. 
uh, force is uh, to also uh, open uh, to diversify the economy, as I say, mm-hmm. by putting and focusing on the transformation of the raw material mm. in mine and I saw to allow the people to transform all this mineral inside Congo mm. instead of keeping in exporting in a row. I saw in the, uh, the agriculture, agriculture uh, so transforming more than yeah. exporting like the coffee can transform here, the tea can transform here, uh, the maize can transform here so, and so rice also to improve the production of rice and all others agriculture to be, to, uh, to read the, 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 the sufficient yeah. um, capacity to feed our people. And I saw another important thing that the president started in the first mandate is uh, on the program of the development of the 145 territories <laughs> where We've already achieved a lot because I made the campaign uh, for the president and I, I traveled to most all, I mean 38 locality in the country yeah. during the campaign. And I can see in the, this program, special program of improving the infrastructure, yeah. road, the uh, rebuilding of uh, the, the reinforcing the administration, local yeah. administration, by giving them new building. Yeah for the as new assembly, for the chief of the territory, improving the, the power, giving capacity for electricity for the people, also water for the people. And I think this is uh, mm. the more directional access uh, that the president talked yesterday. I mean, I think those points were quite um, prominent in the speech of the president, as you, you have said. But then there's this issue. Um, I mean, everyone keeps saying that DRC has everything. Mm the internal capacity of doing exactly, uh, of processing some of those minerals here, of doing exactly what you are promising uh, Congolese people. So how are you going to do that? Have you built enough capacity to do that? Yes, I think the capacity will come from uh, the confidence uh, that uh, the investor will have in Congo. Congo has a lot of to do, as you say. We need to uh, to develop, uh, the state needs to develop the fact even to the people the infrastructure of roads, airport, highway, electricity, and uh, water. But also, we have a code of investment, and we have uh, in the governance an opportunity to lead, to give to everybody, investor, to come and invest in Congo. Because uh, the government will not be able, the budget will not be able to develop, example, all the sector of the electricity. But with a partnership, because we are a liberate economy, we can bring people to come here and invest in dam to develop electricity, to develop water, road. So that is the philosophy of this liberal economy. Yeah. But for that one, of course, we need to inform and to leave all the investors, internal investors, <laughs> external investors to come in Congo and say, me, I want to invest in this sector and give them all facility. <laughs> How key is a country like South Africa, for example, uh, which has been very central in stabilizing Kong in terms of investment? We know its role in terms of um, what is happening in the East. Yeah. And then, of course, even organizing uh, some of the, of democratizing this country. Yes. But when it comes to investment, I think you do see one or two uh, companies, but you, you, you really don't see them, which I think they can help in terms of the know-how, in terms of what you want to do as no, your that's vision. exactly what we're expecting from uh, South Africa. We're expecting from the company, the enterprise in South Africa, to come in Congo and invest. There are a lot of to do, not just in terms uh, with the mine, but in the agriculture, so you have a lot of uh, to do, so in the time of this uh, production of power, electricity. Mm. So I think that then I will welcome and I say that uh, to the, uh, the businessman and the, uh, the company, Enterprise yeah. to come uh, and come and, and see what they can do. Of course, they are welcome. And what uh, South Africa is doing in terms of uh, stabilizing, I mean, the security yeah. is very important. Very important. This cooperation, military cooperation <laughs> through SADC, yeah. of course, is very important. Yes. And then talking about that, they, some business people from South Africa sometimes complain about the rate tapes, about the difficulty of doing business in Congo. So, how are you going to ensure that? Um, those obstacles are removed, particularly 
for the country, um, not only South Africa, but in this instance, I'm mentioning South Africa because of its direct role in terms of uh, trying to stabilize and democratize, democratize the, the country. The challenge that uh, the new government uh, that the president Tshisekedi will put in place uh, have to do is really to facilitate and remove all this. Uh, how do you say uh, obstacles? Obstacles, yes. For the people to come, we know that there are obstacles. Some in the system, in the administration, mm. also. But uh, that is, uh, I think, the, the, the target and the challenge that uh, this new government have to put in place to allow uh, people uh, from South Africa or in the, or other country to come, business to come, facility and invest, in, invest in, uh, investing in, uh, in our country. <coughs> what has been the hold up, um, Vice Prime Minister? I remember um, when I spoke to you back in 2005 as a transitional um, uh, vice president then, I think you were as hopeful as you are today. But, uh, I mean, so many years later, we're still speaking the same language. What has been the hold up in terms of really uh, ramping up the infrastructure development? I think it requests uh, a lot of uh, uh, investment. Building a kilometer of road here, it depends, it's between uh, $600,000 to $1 million. The country is huge, 2,345,000 square kilometers. Linking north, south, east, west, requests a lot of, uh, a lot of money. And I'm sure that uh, the day will uh, find that solution, which is getting resources, financial resources, mm. to build uh, 30,000 kilometers of road. That is for me the beginning of the development of the country. Mm. Putting electricity mm. in the whole city to allow people now to develop their own project mm. inside the city. I'm sure that that is for me the beginning of the development of the country. Of course, the fighting against corruption and so is uh, very important. The improvement of the governance mm. is part also of giving the confidence to the investor to come in Congo. Mm. All together must be able to, putting in place, must be able to, mm. to gain now. But, but do, do you have um, the people who are uh, qualified to do exactly that? Um, I mean, if you want to improve governance, uh, it's not just by word, uh, Vice Prime Minister, it's by deed. So, do you have the sufficient personnel that is qualified to do that? No, I'm sure that Congo has a lot of, a lot of, of cadres who are all over the world. Even in South Africa, you have a doctor there, you have a teacher there, all over the world, in America, in Canada, in Europe. So it'd be easy for President Tshisekedi to choose among all those people, uh, the right people to, to be able to put in place his, uh, his uh, policy, his uh, vision for Congo. How much of... Even inside Congo, so... Sorry? Even in Congo. Yeah, oh, yes. Well. Oh, no, certainly. Yeah. How much of um, a difficulty has the conflict, particularly in the East, um, stabilized, destabilized uh, the development in this country? No. The, the problem we're having is not the first time. It's the fourth time now that Rwanda is attacking attack Congo. Because, uh, as you know, they take advantage on the mineral of Congo. You don't have a, a coltan or gold in, uh, in Rwanda. But if you see the statistic of uh, export of those two examples, of these two materials, you will see that Rwanda exports a gold and exports a coltan. From where? So you understand now why this war is? But I tell you, we're not going, we're fighting, of course, uh, to, defend, uh, to defend our territory, because we're not going to to give a one single square centimeter to anybody, mm. even a millimeter. Is that the reason why uh, part of the key points of the president, I think six or f five or six points, yeah. one of them was restructuring the security to defend the territory. Absolutely. So is it informed by the events particularly led by, as you have said, Rwanda? It is uh, because of Rwanda, but we are surrounded by nine countries. Yeah. Congo is surrounded by nine countries. So we have to defend all our border to enable the people to live in peace, enable also the investor to come and invest in peace and give also employment. All is linked. 
Rwanda is your neighbor, and um, there's a very long relationship uh, between these two countries. So what has been the difficulty in engaging the leadership there politically? Um, have you, as the leaders of Congo, gone to Rwanda to say, stop what you are doing? And what has been their response? You know, on the first at the beginning of the first mandate of uh, President Tshisekedi, he met with President Kagame. Mm. And they, they, they get a very good relationship. Mm. He allowed Rwanda, Rwanda, the Highland Company, mm. to land in the Congo, to travel in Congo, to be even a position in Rwanda. Even there was an investment uh, made by Rwanda in the uh, in, in mine in, in, uh, in the Congo. Around, uh, in the mine. Uh, but, uh, we don't understand. At a certain time, uh, the leadership of Rwanda has uh, betrayed uh, President uh, Tshisekedi. And now start now to support uh, the, this so-called uh, group of activity, which is in fact not activity. It is uh, Rwanda soldiers that we are fighting today. The Rwanda front to the front line. It's the Rwanda soldiers. I, I think we have no problem between the two mm. population mm. because we live together and we speak the same language. Uh, yeah. Some part of the country. But the leadership of Rwanda is causing really problem. Not just uh, with uh, DRC. Today is with uh, Burundi. Yesterday was with uh, Uganda, mm. so I don't know. So the question should be to ask uh, the leadership of Rwanda, what's going on with you against the leadership of your neighbor? Mm. That is a mis uh, We met, uh, and I was one of the person uh, representing uh, uh, the country, uh, mandated by the president, on all this uh, meeting in uh, Gaborol in Luanda, in uh, Dar es Salaam, in Arusha, yeah. in uh, Bujumbura. We are there with the, the, the Rwandese delegation. We're asking them the question, why do you attack us? But you don't have any answer. You're just uh, looking for excuse. So what do they say to they, that they question? Start, at the beginning, they start to say, we are not there. Mm -hmm. It's 23, it's a congruent matter, but today they admit that they are there. Because the picture out there, the last yeah. meeting in Arusha, yeah. I show all the picture. Yeah. Nobody contest. Yeah. So in the engagements between the two presidents, um, wh what does uh, President Kakame say when you raise these issues? Um, I mean, when President Chesekade raises these issues, what does he say? What is his actual response? No, frankly, when uh, the President Chesekade raised this issue, of course, there are no genuine and serious answers why they are there. What are you doing in our territory? If it is a Congolese matter, let us solve this Congolese matter among Congolese. Why do you send your soldiers in our territory? No answer. So, what are you going to do now? Defend our people, secure our people, and defend uh, our territory and uh, its integrity. <laughs> I, I think the, the, the SADC mission that is um, already uh, being deployed, um, part of what you have planned, I think, together with other countries uh, like, like Tanzania, Malawi, is that you want to solve the Eastern problem within 12 months. Is it feasible, uh, given what is happening and given what you yourselves? And then, of course, as Vice Prime Minister, you also carry the title of Defence Minister, so you are very qualified to speak about the issues. So is that part of restructuring to be able to deal with that? Yeah, of course. So restructuring is a program that has started from the beginning of the mandate of the first mandate of the president. Mm -hmm. Increasing the power of our army, the equipment of the army, and the training of the army. That's uh, thing that we are doing in the meantime. Not because of the war, but mm -hmm. it, was, it was really because of one yeah. of the programs of President Tshisekedi in the first mandate that we are going to go on and continue. But uh, now with the SADC, uh, what we say that we have uh, uh, to disarm all this uh, armed group and uh, to uh, defeat, defeat this uh, mm. armed group and defeat the Rwanda army in our territory. Mm. That is the main uh, uh, target that we are getting uh, we have uh, with the SADC uh, uh, through the Sami DRC. So if you engage other regional leaders and uh, not only Rwanda, leaders like uh, President Ramaphosa, uh, President of Angola, uh, president of Tanzania um, and leaders really in the region. So what do they say when you raise this issue and perhaps pre present evidence to them? No, I think that uh, they understood. If they are there, because they understood that we are attacked by your Randis. 
after all the diplomacy have been done, Rwanda still uh, uh, don't understand and want to remain in our territory. And I think that uh, we are part of SADC. Yes. yes, he is part of SADC. Yes. And we have, uh, as you know, a statue uh, of, uh, the, 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 of SADC. Yeah. And so if one of the country is destabilized yeah. by solidarity, the other country must help to establish the stability, the peace, and the security. I, I think what I want to understand... Well, is a, yes, is a big... Yeah. And then of course, the East African, African community as well. Mm -hmm. For developing the economy, yeah. the exchange among all these countries. But mm -hmm. how can you develop exchange, economy, mm -hmm. co uh, trading, when you are attacked? Mm -hmm. no. So I think what I want to also understand is... Um, um, do you feel uh, let down or by perhaps in inverted commas, I would say non-action? Uh, uh, I am aware of the military, the SADC military intervention. So that is the military part of it. But I think what can eventually um, conclude this is political engagement. So your colleagues from the region, uh, the presidents that are leading these countries, do you feel perhaps uh, as the DRC let down that they may not uh, be doing enough in terms of political engagement with one of their colleagues who is next door, who you have reported to be a uh, destabilizer? You know, we have two processes. The Nairobi process yeah. and the Luanda process. Yeah. Meeting is quite, if not every week, two times per month. Mm -hmm. Just to try to solve diplomatically this problem. If we had respect all decisions taken by Luanda process, we should have ended this war up to date. But that one group was hiding yes. between the M23. We should have been uh, going on the process of Luanda to be disarmed and integrate through this uh, process, PDRCS, which is the disarmament, reinsertion, social reinsertion. Yeah. They were adding until the end. Mm. They have now to show themselves. Mm. And they are the one in the front line. But of course, the, Rwand mm. the Rwandese army are not going to disarm mm. in the Rwanda process. Yes. That is the truth. What do you think? The truth always comes to the top. Yes. I think that's, that's, that's exactly why I wanted to know from your uh, colleagues in the region if the agreements like the Luanda process, the Nairobi process that you are speaking about, have been agreed upon, but somehow are flouted or not respected. So those people who are signatories to those agreements, what do they say? It's a violation. Just a violation of the process. And they refuse, in fact, to implement this process. And the only person or group is surrounding his uh, leadership. So what has the UN said around this? You know that, of course, uh, there is that uh, disengagement in the Congo uh, this year. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't see they are there for the last 23 years now. Mm. They are there. But uh, we still have the same situation that we are talking 23 years ago. Mm. So are you not worried now that, um, given your grand vision, um, as we heard from the President, this has the potential of yet again uh, perhaps derailing the process? I mean, we saw the, the improvement, I think, um, uh, from, from around um, late 20, 2000s and to mid 2010s, but then we saw the going backwards. So given that these issues still remain, so are you not worried that your grand vision that you've put out there, which is for all to see, may be derailed by the unsolving of these problems? No. Maybe that is the target of uh, those people who attack us. They don't want to see uh, a Congo be great and develop on that vision. Maybe that is the target to stop us. Okay, maybe to, to conclude on this point, yeah. so are you going to be engaging Rwanda soon about this? Because clearly you are very honest about saying it's Rwanda that is derailing you. Are you going to be engaging them politically, not militarily? But, uh, politically, we were in uh, all this process. They are there. Process of, uh, of Rwanda. In the EEC meeting. They are there. The yeah. leadership are there. Yes, maybe the one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, DRC and Rwanda directly speaking to each other. 
You know, when you are eat, when you eat with the devil, you need to have a uh, witness. <laughs> okay. Well, I get you. So maybe to uh, going towards closure, um, there are other areas that I, I would like to uh, touch upon, um, particularly uh, with this country being so endowed with mineral resources. You know, we are in terms of the motor industry, so we are moving towards um, the electric cars, and then you've got the minerals that can drive that from here. Yeah. So are you ready to seize the moment? Um, so are you not going to be exporting these minerals like cobalt to Europe or in the Americas and Asia? And so what are you going to do to ensure that everything is being processed here because currently there is no capacity? No, but, uh, as I told you, it is one of the, uh, the problem of the president to transform all the, the, the raw material, I mean, here in Congo, in the mineral, in terms of the mineral. Cannot continue uh, exporting just like this. Mm. We have to make, be able to transform. Maybe take about this uh, question of the, the, the electrical car. Mm. But I can tell you that there are already uh, some agreement to produce uh, this battery mm. here in the Congo. Mm. Yeah. And then in terms of the employment of the young people, so what is uh, other than what you've just mentioned in terms of also incentivizing them to be heavily involved in, in, in Congo, what are you also going to do? By developing uh, in a different sector of the economy and gave them through the financial uh, sector the opportunity for these young people to develop their own enterprise. And so by developing, I mean, and uh, improving the investment by a clear and a strong policy of bringing, attracting people mm. to invest to give more employment for the young people. I think both of it uh, will help the, uh, and to increase the capacity of uh, the employment in Congo. Of course, SABC political editor Mzondi Lembeche is in conversation with um, DRC Vice Prime Minister Jean-Pierre Bemba.